In the top of the fifth inning, the rains came again in Wrigley Field as the changeable skies were in Chicago, but things would get underway, and eventually they would get all nine innings in. Not all things went right for the Cardinals on Friday afternoon. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning, Joe Girardi hits one down the right field line. Pedro Guerrero has a beat on it, but so does Milt Thompson, and they both drop the ball, and Milt Thompson isn't too happy about that. But things got better for the Cardinals and worse for the Cubs in the top of the seventh inning as Jeff Pico gave up this RBI triple to Willie McGee. Vince Coleman comes around to score easily. That made it 4 to nothing, St. Louis in the top of the seventh inning. They would go on to win it by a final of 7 to nothing, as it just wasn't a good day for the Cubs. Even Ryan Sandberg was included, and that old reliable made an error in the top of the fourth inning on a ground ball by Milt Thompson. It was his first fielding error in the last 156 games. He did make a throwing error 32 games ago to end his errorless streak. But here he makes only a second error in 754 chances at second base. Joe McGrain gets Dwight Smith to ground out, ending the game as he improves his record to 4-9 and nine with a complete game three hitter. Steve Wilson fell to 1-5 and five as the Cubs have lost nine of their last 11 games. 7-0 St. Louis. On uh, Friday night, and most of it was provided by the ageless Nolan Ryan as he picked up his 295th career victory with a 5-2 victory over the Seattle Mariners. Ryan went seven and a third innings, allowing two runs on five hits and striking out nine. There he strikes out Jeff Leonard in the top of the first inning. In the bottom of the first inning, Rafael Palmero will be hit in the elbow by a Matt Young pitch. Palmero not too happy about that as Dave Valley has to calm him down. And Palmero would be forced to leave the game, being replaced at first base by Jack Doherty. This coming in the bottom of the first inning. Later in the bottom of the first, the defensive play of the game as Harold Reynolds ranges far up the middle. Makes a great diving stop and then gets up and throws out Julio Franco at first base. The Rangers went ahead on an RBI ground out, then increased that lead to 2 to nothing in the bottom of the third inning as Pete Incavilla singled up the middle, his 37th RBI in the air, scoring Jack Doherty. And the Rangers led it 2 to nothing in the bottom of the third. In the top of the fourth inning, Ken Griffey Jr. would pull the Mariners to within 2 to 1 as he golfs a Nolan Ryan pitch into right field for his 12th home run of the year. The solo shot gave him 36 RBIs, and the Ranger lead was cut in half in the top of the fourth. The Rangers put the game away with three runs in the bottom of the seventh inning. First, it would be Ruben Sierra making it 3-1 to one Texas with his 35th RBI in the year. He singles to right field off relief pitcher Gene Harris, and Jack Doherty comes in to score to make it 3-1. to one. A rough time for home plate umpire Tim Welke later in the inning as Harold Baines hits a foul pitch back right off Welke's mask. But Baines would stay at bat and hit this RBI single as 28th on the year to score Julio Franco to make it 4-1. to one. Gino Petrelli had an RBI single to make it 5-1. to one. But the story of the game was Nolan Ryan who was making his first start at home since pitching a, a no-hitter in Oakland on June 11th. There he strikes out Dave Valley for his ninth strikeout in the top of the eighth inning. Ryan went seven and a third innings, improving his record to six and four. Matt Young took the loss for the Mariners. He's two and eight. Kenny Rogers picked up his fifth save as the Rangers won at 5-2. Manager Roger Craig and the red-hot San Francisco Giants at the Astrodome in Houston to take on the Astros. In the top of the second, San Francisco leading one to nothing on a Will Clark fielder's choice in the top of the first. With one out and no on, Robbie Thompson strokes a solo home run. With this one. Right. Off of Houston starter Jim Deshays to give San Francisco a 2 to nothing lead. Home run number 8 and RBI number 30 for Robbie Thompson. As we take one more look at that home run swing. In the top of the third with one out and Brett Butler on second base. Will the Thrill Clark will pick up his second RBI of the game with a line drive single up the middle into center field. Butler scores from second base and San Francisco leads 3 to nothing. RBI number 54 for the Thrill, Will Clark. We move along to the top of the seventh. San Francisco now leading 3-1, to one, one out, and Rick Parker on third base. Kevin Mitchell at bat against Houston reliever Danny Darwin. He hits a ground ball to third base. Ken Caminetti fields it, but he throws a poor throw to the plate. Rick Parker beats Caminetti's throw, and San Francisco now leads 4-1. to one. Houston third baseman Ken Caminetti's one bouncer to the plate allows Rick Parker to score. In the San Francisco starter Scott Goralt's only allowed one earned run over eight innings. Here in the bottom of the seventh, he picks up his second strike out of the game and second out of the inning, getting Glenn Wilson looking at a called third strike. One out and a single later in the bottom of the seventh. Rich Gedman will rip the ground rule double off of Scott Grout into center field that bounces over the wall. Eric Anthony comes in to score. And the San Francisco Giants now lead only by two runs 
four to two. Nice piece of hitting by Rich Gedman. In the bottom of the ninth, with no outs, no on, Eric Anthony against Steve Bedrosian. He strokes a solo home run to right field, way back and out of here. Home run number six for Eric Anthony and RBI number 11. The Giants now lead only by one, four to three. Two outs later in the bottom of the ninth, Jeff Brantley on in relief for San Francisco. He strikes out Dave Rohde to end the game. The Giants beat the Astros by the final score of 4-3. to three. The Giants are now 17-3 in June. The Astros lose their seventh straight game. Winning pitcher Scott Goelz, he's 5-6. and six. Loser Jim Deshays is 3-5. and five. And Jeff Brantley picks up his eighth save. Their best baseball since Stump Merrill took over, currently riding a three-game winning streak in Toronto on Friday night to take on the Blue Jays' top of the first inning. After a Don Mattingly ground out, made it 1-0. Sorry about the coverage here. They were showing a replay when they picked up this home run late. That's by Steve Balboni, a solo shot with two out. His sixth of the season, RBI number 14. That one coming off of Jimmy Key. And it was 2-0 New York in the top of the first. In the top of the third inning, Mel Hall finally showed up. He had to go back to New York to attend to a family problem. And he didn't get back because of plane problems at Newark International Airport. And there's Deion Sanders giving him a hard time. Watch Bob Guerin after he flies out, tries to kick his helmet, misses it, and has to go back. Bottom of the fifth inning, now controversial play. Tony Fernandez up to bat. He smokes this one down the line. It looks like it went over the bag fair, but third base umpire Greg Kosk said no. It's a foul ball, but the ball did kick up some chalk. The next pitch, this man, Alvaro Espinosa, will snag the Fernandez liner, and then he'll throw over to first base and double up Junior Felix. So those were the first two outs of the inning. In the top of the sixth inning, Tony Fernandez had a few words for second base umpire Dale Barnett. Kelly Gruber and Manny Lee come over there to try and keep Fernandez away from Dale Barnett. And Cito Gaston came out. Order would be restored, and then Don Mattingly would get a single. And Tony Fernandez would begin arguing with second base umpire Dale Barnett again as the Yankee dugout looked on. And this was a heated exchange as Dale Barnett would eject Tony Fernandez. That brought Cito Gaston back out, and Dale Barnett wasn't even the umpire who made the call. It was Greg Kosk, and Tony Fernandez still upset as John McLaren gets in there, and then watch Cito Gaston push Tony Fernandez and John McLaren away. So Tony Fernandez is ejected from the game by the umpires and by his own manager. Well, in the top of the eighth inning, the Yankees leading 5-1, to one, leading things off against Frank Wills as Steve Balboni. He hits his second home run of the game, his seventh of the season, another solo shot, this one to left field. That made it 6-1 to one New York. Well, that argument by Tony Fernandez seemed to spur the Blue Jays on. In the bottom of the eighth inning, they score five runs. John Olerud with the three-run homer to left field off of reliever Lee Guterman. Gruber and Bell were aboard. RBIs number 22, 23, and 24 on his seventh home run of the season. That made it 6-5. to five. Kenny Williams added a fielder's choice ground out to make it 6-6. Six to six. And Jesse Barfield, former Blue Jay, the fans still love him there, but they probably weren't loving him after this as he makes this great catch to end the bottom of the ninth inning as he robs George Bell of a hit and send this one into extra innings. And they went to 15 innings as this guy got a little tired. And in the 15th inning, the top of the 15th with two outs, Mike Blowers with the line drive single into center field off of Blair. That scores Barfield and Sanders. That gives New York an 8-6 to six lead. George Bell would hit a solo home run off of reliever Dave Rigetti to make it 8-7. to seven. But in the bottom of the fifth inning, Dave Rigetti would nail down the save. As he gets number 15 on the year, he gets Glenn Allen Hill to fly out to left field to end it. Greg Cattaray gets the win in relief. He's 2-4. and four. Willie Blair takes the loss. He's 0-4. And, and the Yankees win their fourth straight 8-7 to seven in 15 innings over the Toronto Blue Jays on Friday night. Major League Baseball Commissioner Faye Vincent was at Fenway Park on uh, Friday night where the Orioles lost to the Boston Red Sox by a final of 4-3. to three. Mike Boddicker won his eighth consecutive decision, improving his record to 9-3 and three, as he went eight and a third innings. There he strikes out Randy Milligan in the top of the first inning. In the bottom of the third inning, it was a painful moment for Oriole catcher Mickey Tettleton as Luis Rivera fouled a pitch back. It bounced off the dirt and it hit Mickey Tettleton right in the groin. A big-time cup check for Mickey Tettleton, but he was okay and stayed in the game despite a little bit of pain. 
Friday night was Tom Brunanski's first night back in the lineup after coming off a shoulder injury. And in the bottom of the third inning, he made it 2 to nothing Red Sox as he doubled off the glove of Steve Finley in left field. He couldn't hold on to it. Wade Boggs and Jody Reed scored, and the Red Sox led it 2 to nothing in the bottom of the third inning as Faye Vincent takes some time out to sign a few autographs. The Orioles came back with three runs in the top of the fourth inning to go ahead. First, Cal Ripken picked up his 37th RBI with a single to left field, scoring Randy Milligan. Then Greg Walker would tie the game as he picked up an RBI. This coming off Boddicker in the top of the fourth inning as he lines one to right field. Joe Orselak will motor around from second base and come in to score. The Orioles added a run on a ground out by Craig Worthington, but the Red Sox tied it on a sacrifice fly. It stayed tied at three until the bottom of the seventh inning when Tony Pena would get the game winner for the Red Sox. He knocks Jeff Ballard out of the game with a single to left field, his 27th RBI in the year, scoring Tom Brunanski to make it 4-3 to three Red Sox. And that would be the final score as Joe Murphy came on with two outs in the ninth inning and struck out Brad Cummings to end the game. He picks up his fourth save on the year in relief of Boddicker, who's now 9-3. and three. Boddicker goes eight and a third innings to pick up the victory. Jeff Ballard fell to 1-8 and eight as he took the loss. 4-3 to three Red Sox. Since it's our aim to please, here's a play from the top of the sixth inning of this game where Greg Walker hits a pop fly to short right field. Jody Reed with a nice over-the-shoulder catch and throws out Joel Orselak trying to tag and score with none out. That made two outs in the inning. And once again, the Red Sox won it 4-3. to three.